So you should already know how to solve trig equations where you know the domain. So something like sine theta is equal to a half uh, between zero and two pi. So solving that's pretty straightforward. You pull out a unit circle, uh, you pull out a standard triangle, and you come up with two solutions. In this standard triangle, we can say that sine theta equals opposite over hypotenuse, so one half. So our reference angle is pi on six. And then we can put it on a unit circle and we can see that our two solutions for this particular equation are pi on 6, pi on 6, and 5 pi on 6. Okay, so that's all well and good, but it's kind of limiting because we're coming up with a solution and we always have to have some sort of restricted domain to tell us whether we're going to have two answers or three or four or however many answers. I want to come up with a general solution. Here's our first question, and as you can see, we've got no domain to deal with. We're just being asked to find the general solution. So uh, the procedure is the same for all of these sorts of questions. We draw our standard triangle, we draw a unit circle, and we get a sense of what our value for x is. So there's my standard triangle there. Uh, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so the angle is going to be this one here, pi on 3. And CAST, it's going to be in the first quadrant and the fourth quadrant. So if this was like between uh, 0 and 2 pi, we could easily just say that our answer is x equals pi on 3. Uh, and we can do one more answer here. Let's do like a negative answer. Let's say pi on 3, but the answer could also be negative pi on 3. Okay, uh, now what are we going to do with that information? Well, let's think about how solutions work. Uh, now, the first solution is pi on 3. And then we could go all the way around the circle, which is 2 pi, and then add pi on 3 to that. We could go twice around the circle and add pi on 3 to that. We could go three times around the circle and add pi to that. Uh, so what does that look like? Well, we can write that solution, and there's still more solutions to come, but we can write that solution as x equals 2 pi n plus pi on 3, uh, where n is an integer, right? So think about what that's doing now. 2 pi times 0 plus pi on 3 would just be pi on 3. 2 pi times 1 plus pi and 3 would be 2 pi, pi plus pi and 3, which is one surround plus that bit. Put 2 in there and you get 4 pi plus pi and 3, twice around plus pi and 3, etc., etc. Now, we've got another solution as well, right? Because um, we, could go once, we could go once around the circle and come back, because then we'll end up here. Once around the circle, minus pi on 3. Twice around the circle, minus pi on 3 twice around the circle, back. We could put negative there as well. So we have two solutions here, 2 pi n plus pi n 3, 2 pi n minus pi n 3. Now that n also counts for negative um, rotations around the circle as well. So we could go negative 2 pi plus pi n 3. We could go negative 2 pi times 2, so negative 4 pi plus pi n 3 or negative minus, and we can go even further than that. So uh, I think that might be all of our solutions. It is tempting to sort of say, well, hang on, what about, what about this one? What about if I move around the circle and just stop there, right? Well, that solution's covered because that solution is 2 pi n minus pi on 3. So it's taken up there. Uh, now, we might be able to like simplify this uh, a little bit. You, this is a fine answer, but I might just rewrite it uh, by taking this first part of my solution and dividing it, or making the denominator 3. So that'll be 3, 6 pi n plus or minus pi on 3. Right, and then you can see that I get uh, some common factors here that I can deal with. We have a common factor of pi on 3 in both of these terms. So I can say pi on 3, and then uh, multiply by what? Um, 6n to get that first term. And then still a plus minus here, and then 1. So what we end up with is a 
general solution to this of x equals pi on 3, 6n plus or minus 1. Let's practice a few of these. So here's another example. Sine x equals root 2 on 2. Now, again, I'll use a standard triangle and a unit circle to get some solutions here. All right, so uh, root 2 on 2 is the same as like 1 on root 2, uh, which using this standard triangle tells me that x is going to be pi on 4. Uh, now, using our unit circle, it's going to be in this quadrant or this quadrant. So my two answers for this are pi on 4 and 3 pi on 4. But I might just write them in a sneaky little way here. Now, this first one's easy enough. I'm just going to write that as pi on 4. And this next one's not too hard either. We'll just call that 3 pi on 4. Now, what am I doing with these? Well, I'm doing the same thing that I did before, uh, which is going one rotation, uh, which is 2 pi, and then putting an n on the end, because the n will let me do as many rotations as I want, as long as n's an integer. So, uh, my first answer here is going to be 2 pi n plus pi on 4. And if you think back to the previous solution, you might be getting excited and thinking, well, hang on, we're going to put a, like a plus minus in there, right? No, not this time, because 2 pi n is a full rotation of the circle, plus pi on 4. If we did 2 pi n minus pi on 4, we'd end up down here, which is bad news. So we don't want to end up down there. So just plus. Now, the other solution, um, that's we can pull the same trick. 2 pi n plus 3 pi on 4. Okay, and now we have two decent solutions here. And it would be really nice if we could squash them into one solution. So uh, I'm going to make everything have the same denominator. So 4 pi n on... Uh, sorry, it should be 8 pi n on 4 plus pi on 4. And the other one's going to be 8 pi n on 4 plus 3 pi on 4. Okay, and you can see everything's got uh, pi on 4, so we can do a bit of factorising here, put pi on 4 out the front, and we'll get uh, 2n uh, plus 1, and then we can do this next one here, uh, which again is going to have a pi on 4 out the front. You can see things are coming together pretty nicely here, I think. We'll get uh, a 2n here, and a plus 3. And you can see they look really close to each other. Um, and then we're going to do like this really sneaky thing to put them together. Uh, now, 2n plus 1, 2n plus 3. I'm going to split the difference and uh, make it 2n plus 2. And then I'm going to do something else with it. So pi on 4, 2n plus 2. And then this is the sneaky bit. I'm even going to do a different color for this one again. Uh, I'm going to use plus or minus 1 here. Now, what does that do? Well, that has the effect of creating two solutions, pi on 4, 2n plus 2, minus 1, which ends up being 2n plus 1. And it also creates the solution 2n plus 2 plus 1, which is 2n plus 3. So this one thing here is equivalent to these two here. And if we want to like neaten things up slightly, uh, we can rewrite this as pi on 4, uh, k plus or minus 1. And then just some little stuff over here. We need to say k equals uh, 2n plus 2. And now we refer to this n, and n is an integer. So now we have this amazing general solution to sine x pi on 2, uh, sorry, sine x equals root 2 on 2, and that amazing solution is pi on 4, k plus or minus 1, where k is equal to 2n plus 2, and n is an integer. So we're going to do another example here, uh, root 3, 10, 3x equals 1. Uh, now I'm going to need to rearrange that first, and that's I'll just zoom in on that and make that happen first. Uh, so that's going to be equal to 1 on uh, root 3, and that's going to be tan 3x. 
Now again, standard triangle, unit circle. Tell me that uh, pi on six is my solution opposite over adjacent. Uh, and that's going to be in quadrant one and quadrant three. So in other words, I have uh, two solutions. I can say that three X is equal to this value here, uh, which is pi on six. And uh, this value here, which we can write as being um, 7 pi on 6, but I'm just going to simplify it straight off the bat as pi plus pi on 6. Okay, now we're going to do something a little bit different here because um, rather than doing my full rotations every single time, the solution here is much, much simpler. I can just do half rotations every single time. So I can just say, pi n plus pi on six. And believe it or not, after all the work of the previous ones, that's my solution where n is an integer. Um, now the reason, let's look at it. If uh, n was zero, then our solution would be pi on six. If n was one, our solution would be pi plus pi on six, which is that solution there. If n was two, it would be a full rotation plus pi on six, which would be 13 pi on six, which is an answer. If n was negative one, we'd have negative pi, negative pi plus pi on six, negative two pi plus pi on six. And so we'd have our solution there as well. So um, we're nearly there, but not quite, because we don't know what x is, we only know what three x is. So if our three x is that, then x is going to be pi n on three plus pi on 18 um, can probably just simplify this as being pi on 3 n plus 1 on 6 where n is an integer actually let me try something a little neater here pi on 18 uh, and then that would be um, 6 n 6 n and then that would be 1 and again, where n is uh, an integer. Without doing one of these sorts of examples where the thing in the brackets is 2x minus pi on 3. That's going to help you when you're trying to find uh, roots or asymptotes of uh, trig functions, pan functions. Uh, let's take a look at it. All right, so using our um, standard triangle, we know that our answer is going to be pi on 4. And we know that we're in the uh, first quadrant and the third quadrant. Now that means that um, 2x minus pi on 3 equals uh, pi on 4 or um, 5 pi on 4. Now we're going to be able to do the same trick that we did in the last example, uh, which is to say that 2x minus pi on 3 equals uh, pi n plus pi on 4. Um, now that pi n is just a, an integer number of half rotations. So that's where n is an integer. Uh, and now we can start um, unraveling this bit here. So we can say that uh, 2x equals pi n plus pi on 4 plus pi on 3. Um, now that uh, pi on 4, pi on 3, we can make uh, the denominators on 12. And so it's going to be 3 pi on 12 plus 4 pi on 12. It's going to be 7 pi on 12. So now we have pi n plus 7 pi on 12 equals 2x. And then that means that x is half of that. So it's going to be uh, pi. Well, let's, let's write this a smarter way. Let's say one half pi n plus seven pi on 12, um, where n is an integer. Pi sitting in there, so we should probably get rid of them and call it pi on two um, n plus seven on 12. And then a lot of people won't like that uh, 12 on there. So we can bring that out the front, which will give us pi on uh, 24. And then we'll need 12n plus 
7. Don't forget where n is an integer. And we have a nice, neat little solution now for x in this equation. So it's been a big one here, but now we have done four examples of general solutions to trig equations.